Is this microphone on? Welcome to the Eva Match briefing for the South African team. Uh, we have uh, assistant coach Mzwandili Stick, Stephen Kitsoff, and Damien de Allende. Hands up, please, for the first question for the microphone. Don't be shy. <laughs> One here. Thank you very much. How's it, Stick? Um, obviously, so much of the chat has, has, has been around 7 1, the scrum offs, et cetera, et cetera, this whole World Cup. Does the team take it as a compliment that, you know, all, all that outside noise, is that kind of a sign that the, the side is respected? Yeah, I think first things first, it's a, it's a World Cup, the biggest probably tournament you can get involved in in, in rugby. And uh, if you don't get people talking about your team, then maybe you guys are doing something wrong. So when people talk about how we do things as a springbok, it shows that people are interested in what we do and they actually pay attention into it. And for us, we just focus on our strengths. You know, we want to do what works for us. And sometimes it's not always 7-1, but I think for this game, knowing the challenge that lies ahead, you know, that's why I think we went into that 7-1 uh, split. So we just wanted to make sure that uh, we've got fresh legs on the field. A question for Damien, please. Um, I don't know whether you've played against Bundiaki for, for Munster this season, but could you just give us an assessment of the, uh, the challenge that you're facing there tomorrow? Yeah, I've played against him a few times, um, obviously when I was at Munster. I haven't played against him <clears throat> since then because I don't think he played in the um, game he played against Ireland last year at Aviva. But yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic player. Um, he's always been... Uh, up there with the best 12s in the world, in my opinion. Um, and this past uh, couple of games, he's been in good form as well. So, um, yeah, I know it's his 50th tomorrow, and I know he's going to be ready to go, but um, I'm also looking forward to the challenge, and um, hopefully we won't disappoint each other, and hope we'll make it a great test match for both teams. Hi, Damien. Um, can I just ask you, what you learned about Irish rugby during your time in Munster and how beneficial is it that for yourself, Dwayne, Jacques, Razi, Felix, the experience that they have of Irish rugby, what it has told, you know, how it helps you in preparing to face the Irish team? I think for me personally, it helped me with my micro skills um, in terms of uh, probably um, getting connected with the team a lot better. Um, and I think uh, Jacques, Coach Jacques, Rassi, Stoker and Felix have put a big emphasis on that as well. I think they also, I know Stoker wasn't there at Mansa, but I think the, the way we've been coached now and the way we've gone forward these past couple of seasons, um, our uh, individual skill development has increased a lot. So um, for me, I learned a bit of that at Mansa, but I've improved a lot under our coaching staff here as well, which has been pretty awesome. Stephen, we know you're heading to Ulster after this World Cup, but how much do you already know about this Irish side having played against these guys in the URC? Uh, yeah, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, think, I think URC was, was brilliant, especially for, for us as an African uh, team. I think half our team still playing in the URC, so getting a lot of experience playing against guys like Ulster, Munster, Leinster, and you get trying to figure out in your, at your club system how to, to try and get big victories against strong Irish teams. So I think we understand a bit of the mentality and, and I mean with, with Jock and Rassi and John and RJ and some of the guys still being in Ireland, um, you get a bit of a better understanding. So for us, it's, it was all about getting the prep right during the week um, to make sure we can, we can perform on, on Saturday. Um, given the weather you had up to now, uh, and the warm weather that you guys played in uh, arriving here and training in a bit of rain. I know there's not going to be much rain tomorrow, but it's, it's a b very different conditions. Are you guys enjoying a bit of cooler weather? Yeah, I must say when we were in, uh, in Toulon for the week and also in Corsica, you know, we've been working under very, very warm conditions, you know. So now to come to Paris under these cool conditions, I think it's something that we, we are enjoying it, but I must say we've... Even then, when we were in Corsica, when we were training, we always tried to make our balls wet because of we expected the conditions like this. And uh, 
The preps have been, have been going very well. And also, once again, if you come from South Africa, there's a place called PE in Cape Town. You get four different weathers in one day. <laughs> so I don't think it's, that will be a challenge with us. I think a lot of the guys, they are used to those conditions. But once again, irrespective of it's dry or wet, I think we will be well prepared for the game. Afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Kitsi, the scrum battle is obviously going to be quite an important one. You're going up against one of the best tight heads in the world. How much are you looking forward to it, and what are you expecting from, from the island at scrum time? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think Tog is an exceptional player, a good scrummager, great ball carrier, great on the fence, and um, I think it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a tough battle. I think for us to, to actually have a, a full go at them, we have to, all have to be on par, especially our, our pack and then the guys coming off the bench. So... Um, I know big, big games like this. Um, sometimes your set piece don't function. Um, you're a little bit on the back foot, but for us, it's. I think we trained hard um, from from when we got together uh, as a Springbok group all the way back in the preseason camps up to now, uh, trying to improve our scrum every week. So we're looking forward to the challenge. Yeah, I just got two questions. Uh Stick, uh, in the week, bo both Sia and uh, the Island camp have stated that a lot of work gets put in analyzing opposition. And in order for a team to be successful, they need to be innovative. Should we ex expect a variety in tomorrow's game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, you, you're playing against the best team in the world, you know. So you probably also as a team, you know, we have to lean more towards our strengths, you know. And I don't think there's going to be much change on how we normally play the game. Uh, and, and once again, you know, if you look at the challenges we've had so far in the season, you've played the All Blacks twice, probably one of the best attacking teams in the world. You know, on a day, if you're not in, at your best when it comes to your systems on defense and your set pieces, they will punish you. And you've played against the first game in the World Cup against Scotland. Probably also, I will rate them as one of the best attacking teams and organized. And Ireland, I think it's similar to, to how Scotland normally do things. They're well organized in their system. And we know they're very, very, they're not just number one for, for nothing. Surely they're doing something right. They're a well organized team. But once again, as I know, World Cup, sometimes you get different challenges, you know, and you're going to have to adapt. And that's something that I think us as a Springboks, you know, we, we are good travelers, you know. You can take us anywhere, you know, we, we know how to adapt into conditions. And, uh, and once again, from South Africa. You know, with all, everything that we're facing, we are so solution driven, you know, that is strength of our team, you know. So I don't think we're gonna change much, but we're gonna focus on what we do best. And yeah, it's gonna be a tough game. Uh, and I think that's how we want it. We don't want any easy games. Uh, then final one, Kitsi, it's probably, it's a huge boost having the likes of John and Erge in the side for tomorrow's game in, uh, against Ireland, who understand the Irish structures. No, it's massive, and I also think uh, RG and, and JK has been playing exceptional rugby, so their work rate and physicality around the field has been, has been massive for us, so, um, and the insights they gave us in, during the week, so um, no, it's massive, and yeah, I'm happy they, they're in the squad. Plastic, uh, I uh, hope all is well good afternoon, guys. Plastic, um, just tell us more about the significance of this particular island game. Island has been a consistent theme. Um, in your career as, as, as part of the Springbok setup. You were part of the team in 2016 when you faced them in the three-match series. And the box have not always done well in that period. But what is it about this 28th fixture between the teams that makes it so significant? I think if you want to go back to 2016, Kanyiso, and you look at the gentlemen next to me, they were also part of that team. And we have, we have uh, really grown as a team. You know, since since 2016, I know it was a good series for us, winning 2-1 in South Africa. And 2017, I was not part of the team. We know the results in 2017. And we've managed to play against them last year, you know. And uh, away from home, like I always say to you, is that they are a well-organized uh, nation. A lot of things are functioning well in their country. So when they play at home, they're playing in their best territory. But World Cup is a different story, you know. So... We're not playing at, they're not playing at home, we're not playing at home. And once again, if you look at the history when it comes to the field where we're playing, 2007, this is where we had a good record. I'll never forget uh, our former president, Tabon Becky, with John Smith at that time. I was a supporter watching at home in New Brighton. I will never forget those images, you know. There's a good history when it comes to the field here. Yeah. And the last game we played here, yeah, 
against France, if you remember, on the 84th minute, Bongi scored that winning try, you know. So it goes back to the point that I've mentioned about how we normally do things, you know. We found, we found, we, we travel, we're good travelers, you know. And I don't want to talk too much about Ireland and how they do things, but I can tell you one thing, we will be prepared for this game and irrespective of the conditions. Uh, but once again, we're just here to represent our country. So whatever it takes, we'll make sure that we do what's best for South Africa. Okay, question at the front. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Stephen, the bookmakers, it's reported 13 of them have South Africa as slight favorites to win this fixture over the world number ones. Is it a good bet? <laughs> <laughs> Gambling's illegal. Yeah. Gambling's illegal. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a challenging. It's gonna be a challenging game. I think uh, both sides have a lot to play for. Um, for us, it's to make sure we we perform well and and keep the momentum we've gained during the first couple of games of the World Cup. But I think anything can happen on the night, and um, it's definitely the team that pitches up the most desperate and and willing to work for those for those extra bits. Um, going to come away victorious. It's going to be a close game. Okay, question over here. Uh, Zandile, uh, Simon Walzer for uh, Media Olympique. Uh, can you please uh, speak about the, the atmosphere around the team? Because we see, you know, during your captain's runs, we, we see a lot of laughing and it's very refreshing for us. We see your Springbok uh, team is very open to the communities, you know, to the fans. Um, can you explain us what does it bring uh, to you and how have you decided to do things like this? Yeah, I think if you look at everyone who's involved in our team, everyone loves what they're doing. And sometimes we, yes, we work very hard to make sure that our players are well prepared. But sometimes we mustn't forget to have fun, you know. And uh, I think the environment with us, it's a, it's a very, very open environment for players to be who they want to be. And you get different characters in our team. You'll get Peter Steph, who doesn't say much. And you will get guys that are always loud, like uh, Trevor and, and Sias. So I think our policy, we just want players to be who they want to be. And, uh, and bring their best, you know. The most important thing for us is to make sure that whatever works for you to be ready for the game tomorrow, you pitch up tomorrow. And regarding us traveling well and then also uh, taking our team to the people, you know, I think that's what we live for. You know, we, we want to touch people's lives, not only in South Africa, but also around the world, you know. So it was really nice for us when we went to Corsica, you know, a small island, you know, and the community, you know, how they supported us as a team. So it was very special for us. And, but once again, we just want to keep on touching people's life. Okay, question at the back. Hi, uh, Zendeli, question for French TV. You should cross France in quarterfinal. Is it will be more easy to play against France without Antoine Dupont because of his injury? And how much important is that loss for French team? Me? Yeah. Okay. Sure. We're playing a, a World Cup, my friend, and uh, there's no easy game in the World Cup, and every game counts, you know. So, irrespective of who we play in the quarterfinals, uh, it doesn't matter to us. Our main focus is the game that we're playing tomorrow. Uh, that is our main focus at the moment. And just to comment on uh, Dupont, you know, World Player of the Year in the past seasons and a few seasons back, uh, a world-class player. And uh, it's very sad, probably for, for the people, I'm talking about the locals, the French people, you know, to lose a world-class player like that. And uh, hopefully I wish him a speedy recovery. I wish him all the best. And But once again, it's not nice to always see any player who's getting injured in the game. But I wish him all the best. But yeah, once again, it doesn't matter who we play in the quarterfinals. Okay, we'll take a final question, the gentleman here. Stick, Paul O'Connell was in here earlier and he said a couple of times talking about letting his players work problems out on their own and not telling them necessarily how to deal with certain types of problems on the pitch because it increases their ability to do it in a game. Can you talk a little bit about how much you let your players do that, work things out as a group on their own and how instructive you might be in the way you work with them? What's the kind of balance there? Is that for me? Yes, please. Okay, I think internally in our, in our system, in our team... <laughs> We've got uh, great leaders, 
and uh, we always empower them to contribute in how we play the game and we always bounce ideas into them and we always discuss it as a team. Uh, it's not only a one-way thing where we as coaches are driving our plan. Uh, we've got great players there that have played over 50 test matches. Ia Ben has played over 100 test matches. So we always try to pull from our players, you know, and, uh, and it's working for us. And once again, uh, just one thing that I always tell people, we as a Springbok team, we normally learn the best through tough times. If you remember the game we played against the All Blacks in Auckland, you know, I think that's one of the games that really brought us close as a team. And, uh, and the results have been going well so far, you know, and uh, we don't expect any easy game tomorrow. And we actually don't want it to be easy. We want it to be tough uh, just to prepare us in case we go to the playoffs, you know. And I think we, we play best rugby when we're under pressure as the Springboks, you know. If you remember going back to 2019 after losing the first game and then people kept on saying you don't win the World Cup after winning a group stage game. And we've showed people that it's, it is possible. So irrespective of the results, tomorrow to us, you know, but we know one thing for sure. When we get to the playoffs, we'll go hard. And it doesn't mean also tomorrow we're going to hold back. We're not going to hold back. We'll go hard at them. And we know for sure also they've got Scotland waiting for them. We've got Tonga waiting for us. So it's not going to be an easy game, but we, we are well prepared for it. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, thank you, ladies you. and gentlemen. Good luck tomorrow.